Well, let's speak now to Rich Wilson, who's co-founder of the Global Citizens Assembly for COP26. Rich, uh, great to have you with us. Thank you for your time today. Tell us a bit about Global Citizens Assembly, first of all. Well, yeah, so the Global Assembly is the first ever Global Citizens Assembly. And it's like a government, if you like, or a, a, a parliament that's made up of ordinary everyday citizens from across the world. There's two parts of it. There's 100 citizens, which is an accurate snapshot of the global population by gender, age, geography, etc. Um, and then there's community assemblies that anyone can run anywhere. And the really key thing for us was that anyone on earth could be selected and anyone on earth could be involved. And so tomorrow, the recommendations, the declaration of the first ever Global Citizens Assembly will be announced at one o'clock um, at COP. And it's interesting to hear people talking about the political constraints, hearing your um, correspondent before saying how um, physics doesn't care about climate politics. Well, what we're noticing through the, the discussions of the Global Assembly is that the citizens feel really liberated. They are, not, they, are, they are really liberated from the constraints of the past, and we're really looking forward to seeing their proposals tomorrow. Okay, can you give us any sense of what those recommendations made by uh, the members of the Global Assembly who will be here at COP, what those are going to be? Unfortunately, I, that's the one thing I can't speak about. Um, they will be announced. Um, at I, I don't tomorrow. want to. I don't want to steal your thunder. <laughs> I don't want to steal your thunder from tomorrow, Rich. That's absolutely fine. Um, uh, so it's going to be really interesting to have these individuals from around the world attending COP. Do they have any sense what to expect and how th they're going to get their voices across, make themselves heard? Because you know you have a sense of meetings going on, diverse meetings going on, with potentially in any one meeting uh, hundreds of different views trying to, to make themselves heard. Absolutely. So we're really lucky that Anthony Gutierrez, Alex Sharma, many world leaders have come and backed and supported um, the Global Assembly. And I think that's because they know that very often at these negotiations, politicians sort of say, well, we can't do this, we can't do the other, because they sort of obfuscate and say, well, the citizens wouldn't support it. And so because increasingly, and we've seen over the last few years, citizens' assemblies happening in many countries around the world, and time and time again, they are way more ambitious than the politicians, and they're often just putting forward proposals that are granular and practical and commensurate with the challenge. So the reason there's so much momentum and so much support for this project is that very often we see now that citizens are actually way ahead of the politicians. Uh, a little earlier, we touched just very briefly on the idea about individuals and, and individuals looking at COP26 might seem or might feel slightly overawed by this and the scale of it. We're talking about governments, we're talking about global corporations and ask, you know, what can I do? Uh, what difference can I make? But um, how much of a difference do you think uh, people involved in something like the Global Assembly can make in all of this? Because we're talking about a, a moral pressure and as well, as well as a market pressure, aren't we, Rich? Because, you know, we're all consumers. We can make demands of, of businesses, of companies, of governments uh, about what we expect of them. Absolutely. I mean, often people say to me, you know, what's the political mandate you've got for change? How are you going to affect change? And what we've noticed is that the moral authority that these citizens have is incredible. Um, they are unconstrained in terms of the funding. We're not allowed to receive any funding from anyone to influence the process anyway. It has to be 100% set by the citizens. But, all, but also, citizens have got real power. They've got power to change their decisions in the market, their behaviour, but also they've got the choice to elect or not the politicians who will be speaking tomorrow. And I think what, what's one of the really important messages about tomorrow is, is that this is the start of a new piece of global governance infrastructure. So from now on, there's going to be another thing in the mix. There'll be the COP processes, the UN, the nation states coming together after the, uh, the Second World War. And today and tomorrow, there will be the Global Assembly in coming together for the first time for everyday citizens from around the world to come together and to meet crises the world faces. And of course, the crisis we're interested in now is the climate crisis. And if you just think of the awesome power of humanity and the critical role we play to be at the negotiating table around climate. It's critical and it's about time, really, that the citizens were invited to the table. So project forward to uh, the 12th of this month, perhaps uh, mm. a day later if it slips a little bit. Um, what for you at that point will represent a successful COP26 for the Global Citizens Assembly? So 
It would be, I think, that the if, if the um, proposals, the statement that comes out tomorrow is matched by and met by the leaders. So if the leaders are able to at least enter into a dialogue with the citizens, I'm not saying it is likely, I would imagine, that the citizens will be ambitious. They almost always are. And politicians often find the ambition hard to meet because they're constrained by what you might call traditional politics. I thought, um, I thought Victoria Gill put it very, very well in terms of the fact that they're constrained by the reality of politics. And so what I, from our perspective, what would be really important is that we're entering into a real dialogue, an adult, adult dialogue, whereby citizens are really acknowledged as being key actors in the future of managing climate, in the future of global governance, and politicians really take them seriously as equal partners. I mean, ideally, they sign off a communique which would implement all the proposals. I don't know if that's going to happen. But if we get to a point whereby we believe there's a point in time where citizens are really taken seriously on an ongoing basis and are part of global governance, that will be a massive step forward. Rich Wilson, co-founder of the Global Citizens Assembly for COP26, thank you very much.